In this session, we're going to begin slicing up the Photoshop file that the designer sent to us. Most professional designs will be created in Photoshop, but there are other options. We're going to look a little bit at how you slice up a file in Photoshop, but this will not be a complete Photoshop tutorial. A good design will come with various elements of the site divided up into layers. Another mark of a good design is well-named layers. For example, here we have a layer called Menu. If we make it invisible, you can see where it is. Here's one called Cooking with Kids, and it's the site title. Here's one simply called Image, which is a poor title, but I figured out what it does. Because these things are divided into layers, they can be cut out and manipulated individually without having to worry about what's around it. I'd like to point out a few details of this design. It is 960 pixels wide. We'll want to know that when setting up our divs in our site. Another is that this header graphic has a thin white border. We'll need to keep that in mind. But if you scroll down, you'll see the white border does not extend over these cards and doesn't matter down in the content. But it's not there for the footer either. These cards have a layer called Top 3 Food Picks, but that's just content. That's not actually part of the design. It's simply a placeholder to show what should go in that spot in the design. Let's start right off by grabbing this large image in the background. You'll note there's an arrow here. If you click it, you can see that there are a variety of elements to this image. However, only one of them is visible, and it's called flattened. Originally, this image had many elements, but they've all been combined into this one. So let's click that one. I'm going to choose Select, All, Edit, Copy, then I'm going to make a whole new image. Now the dimensions for this new image match what I copied out of the old one. Photoshop just knows how to do that. And then I paste in here. And now I have just that image by itself. Now we're going to save it for the web. And Photoshop has an excellent tool called Save for Web. This provides you four different views of the same image and allows you to choose different qualities and compare them. When saving for the web, you want the highest quality image with the lowest file size. The top left is the original. The top right is set as JPEG with high quality. Bottom left, medium quality. Bottom right, low quality. You can tell the difference between high and low by looking at the woman's face. If you look at her chin and her neck, you can see that it's quite blurry here, but not here. It becomes more obvious when you zoom. Now the average browser is not going to zoom that close, so we only kind of care, but this is a good indication of how a lower quality JPEG loses some. Now another option besides JPEG is Ping24. Now Ping24 is a lossless format, which means it'll never get blurry edges like JPEG. However, take a look at the file sizes. This high quality JPEG is 144K. This Ping24 is 835K. So we obviously can't use that one. I think our best bet might be this medium quality JPEG. The chin looks fairly smooth here still, and at full size, you can't really tell that it's blurry at all. So we'll save that one. The names of your images don't really have any significance to the theme itself. The only really important thing is that you understand your naming convention and that there is some sort of consistency. And now we have that image. Now let's grab the site title. What's interesting about the site title is that it's actually text. And this FX here means that there are effects applied. 
In this case, there's a drop shadow. Now, if we simply copy this one out, we won't get the shadow. We need to flatten it. But if we flatten it, it'll lay against that image. So we mark that as invisible. And then layer 5 is the white there. If we click on this layer, and then this layer, we can right-click and choose Merge Layers. Now, this text has been what's called rasterized. It's no longer text with drop shadow. It's simply an image, and the drop shadow is part of that image. We'll zoom a little bit. And we'll take the Crop tool and get only the thing we want. Then we go to File, Save for Web and Devices. Now you can see the original still has a transparent background, but all of these are on white, and we don't want that. That's because JPEG can't do transparent backgrounds. This is a case where we do want to use Ping 24. It's only 28K, and we get the transparent background. Now with this one, I didn't save it out to a different image, like I did with the other. This is the original one. In Photoshop, you can go to File, Revert, and it's just like it was when you got it. That said, I highly recommend that you keep multiple backup copies saved somewhere so that if you mess up your design, you can get it back without having to go back to your designer. We'll look at getting the rest of the design in the next session.